I'll call to order. I don't know if I'm right. The 23rd meeting of the Mayor and City Council meeting in regular session on Monday, January 14th, 2019. We will have uh, the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Mo. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Ms. Rao, would you please call the roll? Mr. DeWalt? Here. Mr. Sidnor? Here. Ms. Nicholas? Here. Mr. Lez? Here. President Smalls? Here. Mayor Mo. Council, uh, agenda item two is approval of the minutes. Uh, the approval of the minutes of the 22nd meeting of Monday, December 10th, 2018. If there are no changes or additions, I will entertain a motion. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the minutes for 22nd meeting of Monday, December the 10th, 2018. Thank you, Councilman Sidnor. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Councilman DeWalt. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Sidnor? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Lez? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Item B, approval of minutes of the work session on January 2nd, 2019. There are no changes or modifications. Council, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes from January 2nd, 2019. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Councilman DeWalt. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. <clears throat> Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Yes. Mr. Sidnor? Yes. Mr. Laz? Abstain. President Smalls? I vote yes. Agenda item three is report of the mayor and city council. Tonight, I'll start with Councilman DeWalt. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, look back on January 9th, which was uh, National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Um, uh, and we li I'd like to thank the men and women who serve our community in the police department and the sacrifices and commitments they make each and every day to keep uh, all of us safe. Next, I want to just go over a pet peeve that I've been uh, working on for a year now, and uh, I'd like to express some of my findings to the public and the council and the department heads. Uh, over a year ago, uh, I have numerous constituents and neighbors that live on alleys in our, uh, in our city. Um, I targeted three alleys this weekend, and I've been through them numerous, numerous times. And these are three alleys where we have uh, garbage trucks that go three times a week, and we have a recycling truck that goes once. So each week, um, you have fully loaded, you'd have a 25-ton vehicle going down these alleys. And these alleys have deteriorated so bad that there's huge ponds and standing water in these alleys. And I've heard so many different stories and scenarios and is it public, is it private? Um, all I know is that these garbage trucks and these recycling trucks that can weigh up to 25 tons go through those alleys four times a week and the alleys are totally deteriorated to where we have the standing water. It's also like, and we're getting a lot of trash in there now because it's like the broken window theory. If you leave something deteriorating and in, in disarray, it's just gonna cause other people to throw trash and not keep up with the alley. 
here's what my um, findings were. Everybody that I've gone through that live on those alleys, and every time they come out and see me, and I'm usually taking pictures, every one of them, and I know I've heard stories of people being uh, uh, being a little bit angry because people are coming in their alleys or doing that, but I have never met one person yet that has uh, told me to get out of the alley or that they were pleased with what the alley, they're just seeking help. The other thing is with the trash pickup in the alleys, it's very essential, not only for the citizens that live there, but to keep our uh, trash and our public employees safe. If we could keep them off the streets, Montgomery Street, Prince George Street, all the streets around Laurel, if we could keep them off the streets, we could keep them in that alley, there's no traffic coming through there. Therefore, just like Marcus Colbert, who was killed by a very reckless a negligent driver up on Sandy Spring Road on a 25 mile per hour zone. The less we have to have those garbage trucks in on the main roads and in alleys, the less chance of getting somebody hurt or serious, seriously injured. The other thing that I hear is that if we put gravel in those alleys, what about the flooding? The flooding's gonna go into the yards and what about the flooding? Well. I've met, I took a roller and I measured parts of these alleys and I get, it it's, has been beaten down so much, it's anywhere from four inches to almost a foot now below the actual level of the roads. And if we could get, we have it in the budget to fix our alleys, if we could get a, a dump truck with either stone or gravel and have them lay a nice two to three inch layer of this stone or gravel and then when you come to those massive holes that are in there with the water put a little bit extra in there i think we could take a lot of uh, issues especially in the summertime where you have these standing waters where you get a ton of mosquitoes from these from these uh from this water and we could we could get a we could get a grip on it and then when the gravel is in there the water will go below the gravel the gravel heats up with the sun which makes the water evaporate and that would solve us a lot of problems with just a small layer of stone or gravel and an upkeep our, of our alleys thank you uh, mr president thank you councilman dewalt councilman sidnor uh, thank you mr president um before I give my monthly report, Mr. President, I want to offer some assistance. Um, I'm a federal government worker, and we're on shutdown. Um, County uh, Exec Angela Alsabrook, uh partnership with some, some um, surrounding um, partnership to offer some uh, um, assistance for struggling government federal workers. And some of the programs, if you go to the Prince George County website, PrinceGeorgeCountyMaryland.gov, G-O-V, the website, you can um, see the different um, partnerships you have with emergency assistance funds higher education funds, those students that have financial aid problems during the federal government shutdown can get some financial assistance. They're eligible of uh, meal plans, utility, BGE, WSSC, PEPCO. Uh, so there's various services on there, nonprofit organizations, Capital Area Food Bank, um, United Way. But any government workers in Prince George County, you can go to that website if you're struggling, because um, as you know, we're not getting paid. I'm one of those workers, like I said earlier, that has to work and not getting paid, but we will get back paid. But in the meantime, we still got to take care of our, our bills and things of that nature. So I want to salute the county exec and the partnership she had with the organizations in the county offering assistance for government workers. Um, so I'll proceed with my monthly report. Um, on December the 15th, Mr. President, uh, we did Reef Across America, was tended by me and the rest of the city council as well. And also I want to thank uh, the mayor and the city staff for uh, partnershiping with me when the National Black Engineering Society, we have the STEM Day program. Um, Park Recreation Director was there. Uh, Council Clerk Kim Raw was there. Um, who else was there from the city? Um, well, anyway, uh, Director Barnes has sent out a, one of her journalists out to um, film the event. It was very successful. Uh, the kids learned a lot. We registered 30 kids, but I think only 17 showed up. And it, it was a site. It was a good program. So we're looking forward to many more programs like that through the city with the partnership with different organizations. Um, so that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Sidnor.
Councilwoman Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up about the federal workers. I know I reposted something on Facebook where Jocelyn Pill Melnick, the delegate, had posted. So hopefully we'll be able to put something on our city website to talk about the available resources for uh, the workers that are fur furloughed. And we will just continue to pray that they will get back to work soon. That continues my report. Councilman Lez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> Regarding our colleagues that are furloughed and those that are working without pay, uh, I encourage them, if they need help, to avail themselves of all the things that have been mentioned. And there is another organization that deals only with federal employees with grants and no interest loans, and that's FEA, F E E A dot org. Um, uh, it, uh, it is for federal employees. Uh, it's internally funded. So if you need help and you can't make the rent, please, FIA.org. Uh, the other thing is uh, the Farmer's Almanac was correct. We got some snow early. Uh, wanna, I think we need to, uh, I had a chance to ride around and Saw a few people that probably shouldn't be shoveling snow, shoveling. Um, various reasons, but I encourage anybody that's able, check on your elderly neighbors. They may need, uh, they may need some help uh, because I got phone calls and an email from one of our residents and they can't find anybody to shovel their walk. And they're no longer able to do it. Now maybe, uh, uh, you know, I, I have a snowblower, but I'm no longer able to push it because of the titanium in my back. But uh, I noticed that uh, Councilman DeWalt was going down one side of Prince George Street, and my neighbor, Margie McSeeney, was pushing my snowblower up the other side. So again, all we can do to help our neighbors when it snows, and we're probably going to get some more snow before the weekend, please help your neighbors, or at least check on your neighbors. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Les. Um, on January 5th, I attended the 7th Annual College Retention and Alumni Social that was put on by the uh, First Generation College Bound uh, Program. Uh, Joe Fisher and his group is an event that was well attended. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to see uh, the number of young people who are either college students or recent college graduates uh, who are working, who have all uh, worked through that program. Uh, many of them started uh, back when uh, Joe Fisher was doing the homework club in Kimberly Gardens. Uh, they've worked with him uh, from that time uh, to the present. Uh, and again, it's a real pleasure to see them not just graduating from college and universities with uh, business degrees and that sort of thing, which is nothing wrong with, but they are graduating with what I consider fairly technical uh, degrees uh, in a variety of, of, of tech areas as well as science areas. So it's a real pleasure to see many Laurel young people who are, are, have moved through that program. Um, I'll remind everyone that January 16th is Inauguration Day for our governor. Uh, governor Hogan will be sworn in in Annapolis. Uh, on that day, I have the pleasure of working as a member of the Inauguration Council uh, that is uh, working on the logistics for putting that event together. I'm sure there's something that the mayor has been a part of in years past uh, as well. I'd like to conclude with sending out condolences to the Beecraft and Flemian family on the loss of loved ones uh, in both those families. That concludes my report. Mayor Mo. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. A uh, couple things. Let me offer condolences to uh, Jennifer Jeffers, who is our records clerk in the uh, Laurel Police Department on the passing of her father, uh, Charles Webb. 
also to Marlene Collins, who's a member of our Board of Appeals on the uh, passing of her brother-in-law, Stu Mitchell. Um, also, as you just heard, uh, Wayne Beecraft, which was, uh, we got notified the other day that uh, Wayne had passed away. Uh, Nancy Beecraft uh, worked for the city for many years, and uh, we offer um, our support to Nancy as well. And then later, uh, late this afternoon, we learned that um, Marty Fleming, our former city administrator, his mother uh, passed away. And um, that's all we have right now, but we'll keep the council uh, posted. Did have the opportunity to attend the Metropolitan Washington Council of Government's annual membership uh, meeting and awards luncheon, um, as well as um, you heard Councilman Sidnor talk about the uh, STEM fair that he put on. I want to thank him for the hard work that he did and, and the city staff that assisted as well as <clears throat> I think a very good turnout and looked like kids had a, a very good time. So uh, Keith, that was uh, good work. The federal workers um, had the opportunity to talk to um, both um, Ms. Saylor, our budget and management and our city administrator um, today. Uh, we, last time this occurred, we had, um, from the city standpoint, we were able to do a few things. We're looking at that now to see what we did last time and um, and also see what we can do to help. Had uh, some conversations um, with the executive director of Lars, uh, asking how the food pantry was going. Um, what they really are looking for is money to help support. So I may come back to the council with some um, recommendations to you as well. The um, Keep losing my report here one second. I have gotten quite a few phone calls the last couple of weeks. Um, I want to remind people that um, we do have speed limits around the city. We ask that you um, take note of those. There are issues um, not in one part of the city. It's all over the city. Um, our police department continues to try to uh, do what they can and enforcement as well as we have some speed cameras and others. But um, it really is the individuals that live in the community that we need to remind. Um, and in some cases, you're seeing shortcuts. Um, you know, where people are taking shortcuts to thinking they're going to get there faster. That's just not the case. We want to remind everyone um, to obey the speed. The um, winter cops camp, I want to thank our police department. Um, we had sev seven, Chief, seven graduate uh, during, uh, right after Christmas. Uh, the police department puts that on each year. I was invited. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Just a really a good program. Uh, the session is in um, is moving along the 90 day session. Uh, we do have people that will be in Annapolis monitoring, as well as members um, of staff and council members that are on different committees for the Maryland Municipal League. One of their biggest uh, challenges is to monitor the legislation, protect what municipalities have, and to work to make sure they um, uh, help municipalities throughout the state of, of Maryland. The 150th anniversary celebration, they did have the first organizational meeting on the 10th, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Fleming and all those that turned out. We had about 70 individuals um, that attended on the 10th and uh, look for more information. The 150th anniversary will be in tw the year 2020. So they are moving along to plan an event uh, for that occasion. On January the 18th, the Memorial Reef celebra uh, Memorial Celebration of uh, the Life of Dr. Martin Luther King will be here at 4 p.m. at the Municipal Center. If usually out front, if by chance it is foul weather, we will uh, probably move it inside, but we'll wait and see uh, what happens that day. On January the 21st, city offices will be closed in observance of Martin Luther King Day. Um, also on January the 21st, uh, the city will again uh, hold their National Day of Service event here at the Law Municipal Center from, from 9 until 12. And I um, want to thank Audrey and her shops who look for more information coming out uh, on that. We hope to have a good uh, participation as we did last year. And then on January the 27th is the annual um, health and wellness fair at the Anderson Murphy Community Center. It starts at 12 noon, another event that really turned out well last year and uh, look forward to this year's.
Uh, Mr. President, I have a couple uh, mayoral appointments that I'll go ahead and read them off, and then I'll go down and do the citation if you all want to do it that way. Um, mayoral appointments are uh, Craig Frederick to the Youth Services Commission. These are reappointments. Uh, Eileen Collins, who is in the back, um, Youth Services Commission. Uh, Rhonda Whitley, the Youth Services Commission. And then um, we also have the um, appointments of the council members that may want to read off. Want me to read them off? Um, yeah, because I don't have it on my list. I think okay. still up top. Uh, that is mayoral appointments of Council President Smalls to the Planning Commission, Council Member Les to the Historic District Commission, Council Member Sidnor to the Public Safety and Transportation Committee, Council Member Nicholas to the Tree Board, and Council Member DeWalt to the Environmental Affairs Committee. Did you all vote on those? Okay. Yeah. Council, uh, I would ask for your confirmation for these reappointments and uh, ask for a motion and a second. Mr. Uh, President, I'll move for confirmation of all the appointments. Motions, there a second? Second. Thank you, Thank you Councilwoman Nicholas. Comments, discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, would you call for the vote? Mr. Laz? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Yes. Mr. Sidnor? Yes. President President Smalls. I vote yes. Mayor Mo. Thank you, Mr. President. I have Proclamation 2019-1, uh, whereas the City of Laurel recognizes the important role important role of effective education that effective education mm. plays in preparing all students in the City of Laurel to be successful adults, and all children should have access to the highest quality education possible. Whereas quality education is critically important to the economic viability of the community and the City of Laurel is home to a multitude of high quality public and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children in addition to families who educate their children at home. And whereas the city of Laurel has, has many high quality teaching, teaching professionals in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children. And whereas School Choice Week celebrate, is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, school and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective education op options. Now, therefore, I, Craig Amo, the mayor of the city of law, do hereby proclaim the city of law to be, to be school choice week from January the 20th through the 26th of 2019. Actually, you know what? Keith, you want to come down and accept this? You're the one doing a lot of education. <laughs> Then we'll let you make a speech since we caught you off guard. <laughs> I don't have much to say. Though. I believe in investing in the children like everybody, you know, the children are our future. I know that's a cliche, though, but we have to invest in the children. Education is the first um, foundation for our children. So. It takes a village to raise these children. So with the schools and the different youth committees and the backing of the city council and support, I think we have uh, advanced our children in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor. Um, council, <clears throat> I was anxious to get the reappointments for the council committees, uh, but we didn't take the vote uh, for the other reappointments. <laughs> Uh, as the mayor read off, the reappointment of Craig Frederick to the Youth Services Council, Eileen Collins, Youth Services Co Commission, I said Council Commission, and Rhonda Whitley, Youth Services Commission Council. I would appreciate your favorable support. Mr. President, I'll move for approval of those appointments. Thank you, Councilman Les. Second. A second. Thank you, Councilwoman Nicholas. Any comments or discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, would you please call the roll? Mr. Les? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Yes. Ms. Sid Mr. Sidnor? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Agenda 5, general public hearing. I will open the general public hearing at 724. Uh, members of the public are asked to sign the public, rather the speaker list at the back of the council chamber. Council president calls the speakers from the sign-in sheet. Each speaker is asked to give their name and address for the record. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to speak. We have one person signed up, Ms. Amy Knott. If you would come forward, please. Good evening. Got it. 
It's all right. Right. green. I like it. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. Thank you very much. I live in Old Town and I walk my dog every single morning. We walk down Prince George Street, Montgomery Street. We either loop around um, like 4th and Carroll Avenue or we walk up here by um, City Hall. We walk over by my office, Booz Allen. We almost always pass through Emancipation Park in McCullough Field. Every single day I've done it, and he's four years old. He just had a birthday. So one of the things that I noticed in October was that there was some work going on in Emancipation Park and in McCullough Field. They were aerating the grounds, which looked like an improvement, and I was really excited to see that. However, the next day when we walked through, one of the things that we noticed is that the heavy equipment that um, had passed through and done the aeration did a lot of damage to the grounds. Um, there, it had made ruts and tore up the grounds. And um, one of the things that I wondered is because it was so wet this year. I mean, we all know it was record rain all year. Um, if that was one, one of the reasons that the ruts were so deep. But also I wondered if it might um, kind of alleviate that. If as the rain fell, that, that, that those grooves would sort of you know, kind of settle down and it would become easier, you know, that the, they would just kind of settle, everything would um, go back to normal. It didn't happen. So I went out on Saturday before the snowstorm and I took some photos to share with you all so you can see um, what it looks like. And it's a little bit difficult to see kind of the depth of some of these, but I know, Carl, you had talked about, or excuse me, uh, Council Member DeWalt, had talked about measuring kind of divots. And so you'll know, like, when you look at things, you don't quite get the perspective. But um, can I share these photos with you guys? So these are photos both from Emancipation Park and from the, um, the path that is on the south side of McCullough Field between the one softball diamond and then those soccer fields. And um, you'll see as you go through that there are really deep divots. And we've had, I think, at least a foot, if not more, of rain since, this, since the aeration happened and these divots went in. And it's only gotten worse. And where the vehicles go on the blacktop and they cut the corners, there are huge puddles now. And one of the things that'll happen is that next year when it dries out and these divots don't go away, these huge ruts don't go away, and they're all over the field, that people who are playing on the field are going to trip, they're going to crack, they're going to hurt their ankles, they're going to hurt their knees. It's going to be a, a problem. One of the other things that you'll notice, I put in a couple pictures of the paths themselves, and there's mud all over them. And again, one of the things that I thought is that there's so much rain that this mud will wash away. It hasn't. And all along the sidewalk in Emancipation Park, there are clumps of mud and divots of mud. And all along the pathway in McCullough Field, there's mud. And, the, and so I know, I, I guess I should ask if there's a plan to deal with this. And if there's not, I'd like to put this at the front of the council's attention because the people of Laurel it deserve better in their recreation areas. We, we own the property. We'll take care of it. She's already making notes in the back. And we'll check on it, our Department of uh, Park and Recreation. Okay. Well, um, I will keep my eye on it, too, because as I said, I pass through there almost every single day. It won't be in the next week or so. No, <laughs> no. I'll be looking for something maybe March. <laughs> in March. It, it would take care of it. Super, thank you. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you. I have no one else signed up to speak during the general public hearing. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? All right, sir, if you'll come up and give your name and address for the record, please. She, she turned the mic off. Hit, hit the little button until it turns green all the way up front. She turned it. There you go. You're good. My name is Jeff McBride. I live at 807 Green Hill Avenue in Laurel. Um, this month I'll be 64 years old. I'm a very blessed man. I say that because I have a five-year-old child. Along with that comes the responsibility of being a parent. I have been at my residence for 18 years. And this problem has been going on for 18 years. Any hour of any day, midnight, 
2 o'clock in the afternoon. We have people going up and down our street at 50 to 60 miles an hour. The speed limit, I understand, is 25. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but why does it seem to me sometimes that people have to wait till somebody gets hurt or even killed before problems like this are addressed? Why do we do that as human beings? I don't know. I wish somebody in here would give me an answer to that. But it scares the hell out of me. When I see somebody come no. I get a five year old kid. This problem needs to be addressed. Eighteen years is too long. Too too long, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sure we are not the only neighborhood with that problem as I hear. I'm not surprised. But this problem needs to be addressed, be taken care of. And I'm going to be coming to these meetings to see how that comes along. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Is there anyone who, else who would like to speak during the general public hearing? Sir, come forward again. Give your name and address for the record. My name is Zachary Darnell. My address is 8412 Shears Court, Laurel, Maryland. Uh, I just wanted to thank all of you. This is my second city council meeting I've ever been able to have the pleasure of attending. Uh, I've also never been in a room full of so many handsome and gorgeous women in my entire <laughs> life. So for that, I thank you again. Pour it on. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment of my time to say that I appreciate every single one of you and everything that you all do. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank my mother, Mary Darnell. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of seeing her work. Uh, I know it's easy for us to speak, but in order to hear and then also interpret those words with our hands is truly a blessing, a gift, and a pleasure for all those, not only that are here today, but that aren't able to make it and still want to be involved in their community. So I want to thank all of you, not only for your time, but thank all of you for allowing her to continue to be here and be a part of this organization. Let me just say that, that I, I really applaud you for bringing that to our attention because she is certainly one of the sort of unsung uh, people who support our, our council meetings uh, and other meetings on a regular basis. So uh, I hopefully my, my colleagues here will join me in just giving her a round of applause for her service. <laughs> Thank you. All Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during the general public hearing? Seeing none, I'll close the general public hearing at 7.32. Agenda item six is consideration of a bid recommendation to award street improvement project LA19-01. Ms. Fine. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and everyone. Public Works prepared the street improvement project LA-1901 to do asphalt repair, resurfacing, and the concrete repairs on Greenview Drive, Parkview Way, Summit Lane, and the Creekview Drive. At a sealed bid opening at 10 o'clock, November 16, 2018, the city received a total of 11 bids, varies from $340,350 to over $580,000. Uh, we recommend the mayor and the city council award the NZI Construction Corporation, a certified contractor in Beltsville. NZI is also a certified minority business enterprise and a small business enterprise with this project and with the con uh, additional contingency, $37,650 for a total of $380,000. Thank you. Thank you. What's a pleasure to count? Don't everyone speak at yeah. once. <laughs> Mr. President, I vote a uh, yes on um, to prove LA 1901, and as it stated in the order. Thank you, Councilman Sidnor. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Councilman Les. Any discussion? Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Mr. Sidnor? Yes. Yes. Mr. Laz? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Um, I'll abstain. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. 
Agenda item 6B, Thank consideration you. of a recommendation to purchase Energov software. Mr. Frost, did I say that correctly? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, Mayor, Council Members. Um, before you is a recommendation to um, purchase an upgrade to our current permitting software, which is approximately 10 years old, permitting and citizen services. Um, this is an in-place upgrade of our existing software um, by the, our current uh, vendor, which is Tyler Technologies. It is a, um, an upgraded version uh, adds many features and is now a cloud product. This, uh, this project is in the current CIP funded um, at $93,250. It is recommended that the council approve the purchase of Energov 2016 Civic Services Solution for the price of $93,250. Thank you, Mr. Frost. Uh, we have heard uh, Mr. Frost's request for approval. I'll entertain a motion, Council. I make a motion to approve the purchase of Intergrove software. A motion, is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Councilman DeWalt. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. DeWalt? Yes. Mr. Sidnor? Yes. Mr. Laz? Yes. President Smalls? I vote yes. Agenda item seven is introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1935, text amendment number 249, an ordinance to amend the, to the Laurel Unified Land Development Code, Chapter 20, Land Development and Subdivision, Article 1, Zoning, Division 7, Signs and Advertising Structures. Section 2-17.2, Section 20-17.3, Section 20-17.5, Section 20-18.2, and Section 20-18.3 of the City's Zoning Code to allow for existing billboards to be converted to digital billboards and provide an effective date. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 737. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 737. A second public hearing with possible action will be held on January 28th, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item B, introduction to first public hearing on ordinance number 1936, an ordinance to amend the Laurel City Code, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 4, Public Ethics, Sections 2-52, 2-54, and 2-57 to allow for certain technical changes to expand the list of those who may be subject to financial disclosure requirements to change the manner of providing legal counsel to the Ethics Commission, to expand the list of those who must file a, conf a conflict, conflict of interest disclosure statement with the Ethics Commission and providing an effective date. I've read the title into record for the first reading. I'll open a public hearing at 739. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 7.39. A uh, second public hearing with possible action will be held on Monday, January 28th, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item C is introduction and first public hearing. On ordinance number 1937, an ordinance to amend the Laurel City Code Chapter 6, Campaigning and Campaign Financing, Sections 6-1, 6-2, 6-3, 6-4, and 6-5, and Article 2, Campaigning and Campaign Financing, 
section 6-30, and 6-36 to allow for certain technical changes and changes regarding the provision and distribution of information in connection with candidacies, information to be provided on a certificate of candidacy, financial disclosure statements to be filed in connection with a, cert a certificate of candidacy, the filing fee for a certificate of candidacy, the manner of filing a certificate of candidacy, the late filing fee for the report or statement of contributions and disbursements, those individuals authorized to remove a non-compliant -com election sign, and the requirement that all candidates be fully qualified, be fully qualified registered voters in Prince George's County, Maryland, and provide an effective date. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 7:41. Again, I have no one signed up to speak on this President, agenda item. Mayor Mo. I just wanted to uh, thank the council for their input. We did make the changes as you all requested, so I want to put that on the record. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the second public hearing with possible action will be held on Monday, January 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item D. Introduction to first public hearing on resolution number 1-19, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel authorizing and approving the participation of the city in, poten uh, in potential litigation in the state of Maryland against those responsible for the opioid addiction, that should be addiction, I presume, problem in and around the city of Laurel and authorizing the employment of legal counsel to represent the city in this litigation. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 742. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this agenda item? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 742. Second public hearing with possible action will be held on Monday, January 28th, 20. 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. Is there any, Mayor? On the 28th will be the night that we will uh, recognize Mr. Flemian. So, as well. I know we have National League of City, I mean, uh, COG coming in. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, we're going to move to do some recognition for him as well. Outstanding. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If there's no other business to come before the Mayor and City Council, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.